Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. We have got a very special show for you today, folks. How about that? We got three of the greatest minds in all of hockey. How about that? We got the GOAT. How about that? Off the wall hockey, John. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great, Steel. How are you? Glad to be here. This is going to be fun. Yeah, man, doing great. And we got the main man, Pots and Pans, Peyton on the radio, radio, radio. How you doing, brother? <laughs> uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, it's been a pretty good week so far. I've been busy. Uh, how about you? Oh, man, I'm getting better every day, every day. How about that, folks? And the master, Perlo Wisdom, is in the hizzy. What is up, brother? Ah, uh, uh, talking hockey all in the morning, man. That's good life. <laughs> I'm loving it. How about yeah. that? All that. Yeah, man. These guys right here are all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. They all each have their own shows and they each do their own thing on on the uh on the network. And we, we love having these guys as part of the crew. We love having these guys as part of the uh the reason why you come here to watch Steel Flyers. So I thought I'd get them all together and ask them a bunch of great questions because in the NHL, the trade deadline's coming up here real soon, and we're getting about halfway through to the season, and you're starting to see teams starting to separate themselves a little bit from the top top and the bottom and then you're kind of starting to see some of the teams drop away and you're starting to see teams trying to you know and so what we wanted to do was go through each division and talk about who's going to be the buyers and sellers at the trade deadline coming up here real soon so we're going to start off with the north division that is all of the canadian teams and then we'll break each team down and i'll have some questions for the guys and we'll see where we are at the end and who's going to be buying and who's going to be selling and who's going to be going and who's going to be staying. So we're going to start off with the Toronto Maple Leafs. They are currently leading the NHL, uh, leading their division. Uh, they're pretty much leading everything. However, their lead is kind of shrinking a little bit um, as some of the teams are starting to you know, build up and through. So... Uh, let's start with uh, John from Off the Wall Hockey. Uh, we've talked a lot about um, Toronto and just how good they are and, and what's going on with them and the whole nine yards. Yep. And um, we, we like some of the things that they're doing. So, John, what do you think is going on with Toronto? Do you think that they're going to be – Buying or selling? Well, they're definitely, if anything, going to be buying because they're first in the first in the division. They're leading the way. They're going to be gearing up for a big playoff run, hopefully. Um, then uh, uh, they're certainly going to be buyers this year, without a doubt. I just I don't know how many moves they're going to make. They don't have any cap space to work with. Um, so if anyone that they brought in, they would have to send contracts out and try and open up some space there money wise. I have a feeling because Toronto, they've added a bunch. They added a bunch this in the off season. I think they might not do much at the deadline this year. I think this might be a very quiet deadline for the Leafs because um, they have no money to work with. So unless they're able to move some contracts out, they're not going to be able to do anything. Right. We've talked a lot about them adding defense, but now really with the offseason moves they made, they made, I don't think they're going to be adding any more defense because they already have like eight defensemen there. Um, they have they have veteran guys. They have Spezza and Thornton and um you know maybe another depth winger or something like that but i don't expect much from the leafs this year i think they're going to have a quiet deadline okay all right um i i can attest to that a little bit because it does seem like things have come together a, a lot for toronto because that was some of the things that we questioned at the beginning of the year was their uh you know defense and and their goaltending so uh peyton what do you think do you think toronto is going to be buyers or sellers at the at the trade deadline uh, I think they'll be buyers, uh, but I am with John on the fact I don't think they'll make very many moves. I think something they could use is some more depth at the center. Uh, Mikhail Granlid would be, uh, I think, a perfect guy for that third line. Kerfoot's been kind of bounced around the lineup there for Toronto, hasn't found that perfect fit. I think yeah. if you were to go after Mikhail Granlin, who's good at both offense and defense, uh, would be a perfect guy to put alongside of Mikhailiev and whoever else plays on that third line. I think 
that would be a perfect guy, but you would have to trade a, away a contract. And especially with Zach Hyman, uh, he's going to be a, a free agent this year. And he's going to be a big name free agent uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs to sign because he creates a lot of er- energy uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And if I was Toronto, I would be looking for kind of more of those energy players because I feel like that's what they need. Uh, they're missing Wayne Simmons yeah. right now, especially him being injured. They're missing some big heavy hitters on that squad to kind of give them that boost of energy. Hyman's been that guy, but they haven't had uh, too much else uh, on that squad. But uh, yeah, I think they're going to be buyers, but I don't see them making too much moves this uh, this uh, trade deadline. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that as well, too. Uh, it just, just kind, of, kind of seems like they might just be doing some depth or they might try to pick up some draft picks. What do you think, Pearl? Give us some uh, give us some pearls on the Toronto Maple Leafs for the trade deadline. Uh, what they will do and what I think they should do might be two different things. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think that they uh, I, I think they should identify more grit on their D line. They they have an opportunity to do so. Uh, as far as cap space is concerned, like you could go to like uh, Arizona. I was trying to look that up. Um, I really like Jalmerson there he's got cups they could add more cups there too in toronto mm-hmm. and uh it's these he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year uh arizona can cover some of the some cap room and you could trade a guy like dermot they need they're going to need a uh, defenseman there next year because they're losing out on a lot so they might take a flyer on a young dermot but uh um so they could trade. They they could trade for Derma, take money back, and you could work out some retainment to be able to get a guy like that. But if I were them, that's what I would be going for. This year would be a great time for Toronto to really just go for it. I mean, there there are so many teams that are falling off the vine in the North. Uh, the only one that's really holding on are the one that beat them last night in Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. Montreal looks like they're falling off. Uh, Vancouver's struggling to get back to where they know they can be but haven't been to yet. The Edmonton Oilers are floundering all over the place. If there was any year to really say to throw caution to the wind a bit, uh, <laughs> I'd say that this would be the one. And a guy like Jalmerson and that Toronto Maple Leafs lineup would be just uh, per- exactly what they need as far as I'm concerned. I also agree with a possible uh, still need some depth wingers. You know, they have yeah. Sim- Simmons. And again, more, more, why you learn your lesson and do what Tampa Bay did and bring some guys like Coleman and Goudreau, uh, Goudreau and stuff like that. And if you can pluck them, but they, they do have cap restraints, but if I had to do one thing and I was able to do it and you could do that, somebody like Jalmerson would be perfect for them. But I certainly think they're buyers for sure. If they're mm-hmm. going to be it. Yeah. I'm with you on that for sure. I'm with you on that for sure. I, I definitely agree with that as well. Um, I, I I just – they seem like they're much more of a, um, uh, a try to go for it now because when you look at their future, most of all these guys are signed up until next year. But then after next year, you know what I mean? Then you're looking at a bunch of guys coming off the books, mm-hmm. right? So they're maybe not necessarily going to be in the market – like with what I kind of what John said, they may not be in the market so much this time, but maybe this time next year might be a different story for Toronto is, is where I'm going to go with them on this. I think it's going to be a quiet day in Toronto. If they, they might bring in a guy, if they can, you know, like they might make that move if they can with Jalmerson, you know what I'm saying? But otherwise I think that Toronto is going to probably be um, standing pat for, for the rest of the season, as far as that's concerned. Um, all right. Well, uh, so just to, speaking of the team that uh, was playing against Toronto and, and was doing, you know, uh, we're, we're talking about Winnipeg's and Edmonton's and, and the Vancouver's and stuff like that. So let's go with the second place team in the north and let's go with the Winnipeg Jets. Mm-hmm. And, excuse me. They are currently five points behind the leading uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Mm-hmm. That is not I mean, that's. And then the next team is 32 with Edmonton, and then the next team is 29 with Montreal. And so once you get past, uh, you know, the, the top three teams, it drops off relatively significantly. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And so we're looking at Winnipeg Jets now. And, Pearl, we'll start with you first. What do you think about the Winnipeg Jets this year? Do you think they're going to be buyers or sellers, the fact that they're five points back and the fact that they haven't really been playing the best hockey in the world? 
Um, they've been. I really liked them the way ever since they got Dubois. Uh, they've been coming along really well. I love the brand of hockey that more Paul Maurice has uh, instilled in that team. Uh, Nikolai Ehlers is taking the uh, bull by the horns after the la- li- Lion A leaving and is looking fantastic. Uh, they're top six, and it looks fine. I don't think they would add there. I think they could also be buyers. And they're in the same situation as Toronto. If they're going to go anywhere, it's probably going to be their defense. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I mentioned Jalmerson, but there are many other defensemen out there I think that they could go out. I really think it would still be a good idea for them to improve their top four if they can but they're out of cap space and that's going to be the problem in all of these trades of course is uh, the cap space however I'm a believer that it just seems if teams want to get something done they get something done you withhold money here you retain money here you add a draft pick and all of those sort of things like that, and you find a way. There's always if there's two willing teams, they will find a way. So you think that you think more so that Winnipeg is going to be um, buying uh, at the trade deadline, if possible, to try to get more depth. I would think so. Um, it, it really they they like they, when they play against Toronto, which is basically who they're they're measuring stick right now. They seem to have a uh, a system that works really well against them. So they should be feeling like they have a really good chance to get out of the North. And uh, as long as Connor Hellebuck comes back, and he do, mm-hmm. he, I, I imagine he will. He's had a little bit of a struggle early. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they really should. Feel feel like they have a chance i would say so um yeah i would say buyers and uh maybe as we go through here i'll look at identify some defensemen because i think defenseman is going to be the name we the, the the position we talk about a lot here uh always usually always is going into the playoffs looking for defensemen well you know d- defense wins championships i mean you know that's just mm-hmm. the the status across the board there you know what yeah. i'm saying we were talking about one guy uh quite a bit right now with ekholm uh, yeah you know that that could be an option wow I mean, so yeah that would like be that, an amazing yeah. addition here at, at winnipeg for sure if they could do it yeah, they'd have to do something like they could move Matthew Perot or something like that just to they'd cover. They have to the, do something like that, yeah. To cover the salary and then throw a first and prospect or whatever. And, yeah, you know, that would he would be fantastic for that team. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, so tell me, John, what do you think about uh, the Winnipeg Jets and their their chances? I mean, they are five points back. Um, they have been playing well against Toronto. What What do you think? Are they going to be buyers or sellers at the trade deadline? Oh, definitely buyers. I mean, this team's been way better than I thought they were going to be this year. Um, they've had a great season. They're in second place, which I thought they were going to be down in like fifth or sixth, and they're all the way up in second. Um, they've they've had an awesome year, even without Connor Hellebuck playing his best hockey. Um, they're they got a great top six forward group that's scoring a lot of goals. Uh, defense is obviously the question here. Uh, I think that's where that they would be adding. Um, They need a top four defenseman. If they're going to go into the playoffs and actually make some sort of run, they need a top. They need another top four guy. Josh Morrissey cannot do it all alone. And then you have Pionk's had a really good year, but I don't know if he would hold up necessarily playing that same level in playoff style hockey. Um, Same thing with DeMello. Dylan DeMello is a solid guy, but he's not on a good team Dylan DeMello is on your bottom pair not in your top 4 if you're going to be a cup contending team he's not in your top 4 mm-hmm. so um i i think that you know that's the one area where Winnipeg needs to add and i think there's there's going to be guys out there on the market um that could fill that role but there's going to be a lot of teams looking for a top 4 defenseman so it's kind of going to be a bidding war to see who's able to bring in the top 4 guy that actually makes a big difference for the team because uh I think there are going to be a lot of teams out there looking for it so Ekholm is definitely the name that jumps out um that would be a perfect addition for the uh for the winnipeg jets but that would be a perfect addition for a lot of other teams as well so um (laughs) i have a feeling we're going to be mentioning his name along with a lot of other teams as we go along (laughs) yeah he's the Mm -hmm. guy that i think is going to have a lot of suitors and nashville is going to be able to get a pretty good return for yeah Mm -hmm. and and you know one of the other players that you guys had mentioned before was jalmerson too I think Mm -hmm. now the only difference is, is that one of them has a two year contract at 3.75, which I believe is Ekholm. And then Mm -hmm. uh, Jalmerson uh, actually only has a one year contract, but his contract is a little bit more. 
Yeah. At like mm-hmm. four and a half or something like that, or 4.75, whatever, but it's more. Okay. So, and you're going to either have to do trade salary for salary. That, that's how this is all going to fly, I think. Yeah. You're just going to have to do the salary for salary. So, Peyton, give us your, uh, give us your uh, thoughts here on, on the Winnipeg Jets and what you think that they might be doing here at the trade deadline. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll add on to the point. I think there will be definitely a lot of contract for contract trades over this next little bit, especially with the flat salary cap that we had to to deal with. And uh, I, I think with the Winnipeg Jets, they're they're definitely going to be buyers this year. Their offensive core looks lethal from top to bottom, um, from Stastny to Shifley to Wheeler playing a little, little bit weaker defensively, analytically, um, to Ehlers, to Kyle Connor. I'm so glad I have Ehlers on my fantasy team. But um, <laughs> defensively is where they need to improve. They got Tucker yeah. Pullman playing up near 18 minutes, which, I mean, he is... At best, your top six guy, maybe even your seventh best best defenseman. I think somebody like a David Savard, uh, if you're looking for a rental. Yeah, uh, that's a good name, too, that I've been hearing out there, too. Mm -hmm. You you need a right-handed defenseman in Winnipeg. Yeah, they have Pionk and Dylan DeMello, but DeMello really hasn't been playing that top time. And Savard could be a perfect guy to play alongside of Morrissey. You got Ekholm, Vince Dunn, if you're looking for a nice young defenseman to come and fill some time. Now, problem is you have to sign them back up. And Winnipeg's been having a problem with, you know, keeping defensemen in that club and able to re-sign people. So somebody like a Matthias Ekholm, I think, would be absolutely perfect for the Winnipeg Jets. Now the problem is, is they have to deal with that 14-day quarantine, which I think a lot of teams, a lot of American teams, will probably use that as leverage when doing deals with other teams and because the players would want to play more hockey because they're able to play more hockey if they do a trade in America compared to if you are being traded to the Canadian teams. So it's going to be hard for the Canadian teams, especially Winnipeg. They need to make some moves on the defense if they want to go deep this year, which I think they can. I think they could go very deep, especially with how well they've been playing against Toronto. Uh, I think Matthias Ekholm would be a big one, but that 14 day quarantine will be a pain. I'm with you on that, man. You know, that's something I didn't even think about um, with any of these trades or any of that other thing. That's a great point because as time goes along, more and more states in the United States are lifting restrictions and mm-hmm. especially travel restrictions. And I know that some of the states on the on the eastern seaboard are, are going to be uh, lifting those restrictions coming this Friday. OK, so um I'm wondering if maybe if Canada, you guys are not in any way, shape or form going anywhere near lifting any restrictions as far as travels or anything like that, correct? No, we oh. haven't been uh, opening any travels, but some of our restrictions have been easing up here in Calgary, at least, and around Alberta from what I've okay. been hearing. Okay, so that's that's going to be, I think, the ticket right there. If mm-hmm. If teams are going to be allowed to make trades with the northern teams... Okay, without having to deal with that 14 day quarantine, I think that's going to make things a little different and Mm -hmm. will open things up more so. Otherwise, though, I I agree. The only way you're going to get any trades is if you do amongst the Canadian teams. You know what I mean? And and what really is that going to be like? Really, well, you don't got a lot of defense there. That's what I Canadian mean. Division. That's not going to be much. <laughs> I I think the Canadian teams are going to make trades well before the deadline. Oh that's, yeah. See, yeah. Okay. I just, that's what I that will be the do. difference. Is they'll they'll make trades well before the deadline. See, this is why I bring the greatest hockey minds together because we talk about all this great stuff. See, I would have never thought about that, but that's exactly right though because I agree. I think they're going to make those trades sooner. Yeah. You know what I mean? To, so that they can get around that 14 day quarantine or that so that those players can do that 14 day quarantine and then be able to come back and play. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So another um, reason think- why a lot a lot of teams will do that is this opening up restrictions could blow up in everybody's face and end up being back right back on it again. Nobody knows. It already happened already. So uh, yeah, that's, that's another true. reason why people may they do it. Or, or other teams may do it early just in case. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I get it. I understand. I mean, you know, but look, this we're, we're coming to that time now where pe- places are making those, those types of decisions, and those types of decisions are going to affect how different players are going to be able to be traded back and forth to different teams. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just that's just the logistics of it. So now we're, we're going to go with, the, uh, with Homer, 
up there, and we're going to talk about the Oilers. And and oh, gosh, are we? I, I, I guess we'll I guess we'll start with Peyton first. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Um, gee, Peyton, uh, you're a Calgary well, fan. I'll finish oh, yeah, off. Yeah, big big Calgary off, fan. His, I'll finish off his rant. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Edmonton has been playing better as of late. Mm-hmm. Um, for the most part, they had a nice little um, eight and two streak there uh, for the, for ten games there for a little while, and then, you know uh, things happened. But all things considered, they're only one point back of the second place team. Okay, and they have been playing relatively better than the competition around them for the most part. Um, so, what do you think about Edm- Edmonton, uh, Peyton? And you only get. Four minutes go. <laughs> Beside for the bad coaching, I, I think the Edmonton Oilers have been pretty good this year. Uh, I've been pretty excited about them. Uh, I think if we were, I, I think we are going to be buyers. I've been hearing tons of rumblings about Jake DeBrusque, uh, especially him being scratched in that last game there for Boston. Yeah. You can have him. He's useless. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take him. Uh, I'll take him for Tyson Berry, man. Tyson Berry, uh, I I was hearing a deal was like Jake DeBrus or Tyson Berry in your home back in nine, and I heard, which I would love. Tyson Berry's been kind of useless on the defense since we already have like 50 billion offensive defensemen on our defensive core already. Um, I've also been hearing rumors about, you know, Jones uh, and Ethan Bear maybe going after Matthias Ekholm. There could be multiple routes that Ken Holland goes with this because we do have players that we could trade out and chase on or Tyson Bear, even a Zach Cassian if someone wants them. But I've been hearing Eric Stahl, uh, Jake DeBrusque, or even Matthias Ekholm coming, in, uh, coming to the Edmonton Oilers, which I would love all three of those players. Eric Stahl is a good third-line centerman. Kyle Turris hasn't worked very well for us. Uh, he had a good last game, but that's against Ottawa. Um, he just hasn't been that type of two-way guy we really need him to be. And I think Eric Stahl, with his experience, his cup experience too, I think he'd be a, a huge piece to the Edmonton Oilers. I think that would be the main guy that I would focus on moving for because Jujar Carr has been our third line centerman. And I think if we were to focus more on a third line centerman, it would make our five on five hockey way better in Edmonton, which I think is something that we need to improve upon. And I don't think we're going to be able to touch the goaltending until the off season, just way too much cap. You would have to move around, especially with Koskinen's contract right now. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Cause they all look, I mean, his contract is 4.5 this year, and for the yep. next, and for the next year, and that's the other thing too. Where they uh, Edmonton kind of needs to make it happen here because they got a lot of guys uh, up for free agency after next year. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So this is that their window is kind of, kind of coming to a close here. And let's face it, they've got the most prolific points producing offense in in mm-hmm. the league right now. So I mean, they obviously don't need offense. <laughs> Uh, but the back end might be uh, something of a concern for them as well. Uh, Perlo, why don't you drop some wisdom on us on 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 the uh, Edmonton Oilers and and give us your take on what you think about where the Edmonton Oilers are going to be here at the trade deadline or even potentially even before. Well, they're likely going to be buyers, but um, he mentioned uh, goaltending. Uh, and for, as far as I'm concerned, if you can't get goaltending, you might as well be sellers. Uh, they don't. They don't have the goaltending to be successful in the playoffs, anyways. So if you make the playoffs, whatever. Uh, if you can't get goaltending, forget about it. Just sell off whatever you can sell off. Get some draft picks and try her again next year because this goaltending is just not good enough. So uh, <laughs> it's that's how you really feel there, Pro. Well, <laughs> it's not. It's just not. Right. Uh, the Kyle, Kyle Turris is a third line center. If if you're gonna be buyers, I agree with Peyton for sure. You need a third line center that can actually play hockey. Uh, so tourist is not it. Um, <laughs> I thought when they got him from Nashville, I thought, okay, you know, Dave Tippett's going to get the best out of this guy, possibly. Blah blah blah. No. So maybe go back. The other guy that they were looking at and was a guy I was hoping they were going to grab was Eric Halla from from the Nashville, and he's one of the few players that have played well for Nashville this year. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe go back to Nashville, give him a call and see if he can fill that hole there. Uh, possibly throw a flyer at, uh, Pekka Rene or something like just to see if he can get yeah. that old magic back or something. 
He's right. It's going to be hard to get goaltenders out there because there isn't many goaltenders to go around. Uh, the we were talking, we all were talking before the season started. Is if you didn't get a goaltender before the season started, you probably weren't going to get one in uh, the regular the season. season. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's to, any goaltenders out there be worth anything are going to be on teams that want them. Uh, because most of the teams that don't have good goaltending as far as a top two pair is concerned aren't going to make it. So they're not going to want to give up the number one likely, and uh, there's not going to be too, too many number twos available. And that's exactly the way it is. There really isn't uh, number twos available unless you can like convince possibly Miller and Anaheim to take a shot at a cup. I'd be yeah. happy with that. Something yeah. like that. You know, uh, it's not going to cost you much, and if he does happen to go on a run, and Miller can do that, you might have a chance. But as it stands right now, I think the Edmonton Oilers will sort of be in buying mode uh, tr- on a few things. But I would, uh, I, looking at their team, I really don't think if they can get goaltending, I don't think they're going to be trying too hard this year. Going to have to tend to agree with you on that one, uh, John. What do you think uh, about Edmonton and their what what they're putting together up there? I mean, you know, they definitely are prolific on offense, and and with what uh, Peyton and 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 Perlo said, and we all kind of agreed on this too at the beginning of the season, where the the goaltending is going to have to be the key. What do you think about Edmonton and their trade deadline acquisitions, or what they're going to be doing? I I think they're going to be looking to buy, but I'm with Perlo. I, if they don't get any goaltending then they're not going anywhere in the playoffs. Koskinen and Smith are not taking you anywhere in the playoffs. And this this team at the deadline last year went out and made a bunch of moves and brought in Mike Green and uh, Tyler Ennis and Andreas Athanasiu, and that all blew up in their face, and they couldn't even beat Chicago in the qualifying round. So I don't know if they're going to be a little more gun-shy on the, uh, on the trade market this deadline because they went out and they made all those moves last year, and it did absolutely nothing for them. But if this team needs any anything it's a third line center that's the one area where they are i mean absolutely putrid right now <laughs> jujar Kara being your third line center or being on your third line in general is a problem mm-hmm. um and you know th- there are there are some guys out there that they might be able to make a move for in that position i think they need to add a defensive defenseman as well because with the exception of adam larson they do not have a defensive minded defenseman it's all puck moving offensive guys and they don't defend well in their own end and um i i think they really need to shut down d guy um but they might not even try to make that move if they don't get goaltending because they they gotta ken holland's gotta be smart enough to realize that you're not going anywhere with smith and koskinen yeah i'm gonna have to agree with you on that um for sure i mean they and that's the thing that kind of surprised me as well, too, that you brought up, John, about what they did last year at the trade do- trade deadline and everything and what, what they tried to do last year. And then they got to the return to play and it did, didn't do anything for them. You know what I mean? And they weren't able to, to, to go anywhere and do anything with it. Yep. So here's the thing, though. Uh, in spite of how not good the goaltending is, I mean, it just seems like Right now, it just seems like their offense is enough to 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 outlast the that kind of issue. But I agree with everybody else. Once we get into the playoffs, uh, where now you're not necessarily playing against teams that you've seen all year, and you're playing against other teams that have you know much different talent and or whatever the case is, I agree. I think that their goaltending is going to be highly suspect and and much coveted. But with that being said, there who's of what goalies are out there that they could even potentially, I mean, they have zero cap space. They, they got uh Koskinen is on 4.5 mil. Smith is on 1.5. I mean, Smith even has a no trade clause. Uh-huh. So, I mean, mm-hmm. what, who are you going to get? Yeah. You'd I, have to give up uh, um, like uh, Peyton mentioned, Barry. Uh, mm-hmm. You'd have to throw Barry out there just to cover the cost yeah, of the contract. Yeah. Of what? the cost of the contract. Okay, well, let's say what I got here. Cost of the contract, and uh, then you would like say quick out of Los Angeles, possibly. Yeah, yeah. he stinks yeah. now. Uh, you're I don't getting know. Older like, and older right, for goalies. You're right. There isn't really 
That's what we were saying. I say Miller yeah. out of Anaheim. If you can convince Miller to take some little time away from his family to give it a shot, that would be the guy I'd be going for. He doesn't cost that much. You can probably make the finance money work somehow. That would be the guy I'd be looking at myself from what I see. I don't see anybody else here really that – because all the teams are going to want to keep their backups going in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. I was hearing so, I was hearing Ms. Lincolns from Columbus, but – Ellie Freeman said that they wouldn't be making a move for a oh. goaltender until the yeah. off season. Bernier just because of the fact that, especially with COVID, you want to be careful with your goalies. You don't want to be trading away like a backup or a good starting goalie like Merz Lincoln's until the off season. Yeah. Then you might have to quarantine. You might have to use one of your taxi squad goalies and you really don't want to get into that type of situation where you're having to play a goalie 10 games in a row like the Oilers did. Don't want that happening. <laughs> no, no, I definitely don't want to be doing that. All right, so now let's go to this team here. Um, it's fourth in the division right now, but this team here just seems like I don't know what's going on with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, we we really thought that Montreal was going to struggle out of the gates because of all the moves that they had made and all the players that had come and gone and everything like that. And we thought they were going to struggle. And, boy, they just lit it up in the, the, the first, you know, 10, 12 games of the season and just lit it up. But now, suddenly, the coach has been fired. The goalie coach has been fired. And, and now they're kind of starting back from the beginning again. And it's like, whoa, 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 what? What happened there? Um. I'm going to start off with with John on this one. John, what what's going on in Montreal? Can you, can you uh, good give us question a insight on on maybe if they're going to be they they've already made some coaching moves. I mean, I guess what what other player moves could they potentially make? I don't know. This is going to be an interesting team to watch because on paper they they have a really good lineup like you don't look at this roster and see really any holes they're deep down the wing they maybe could use another center but that's not going to be an easy move to make defensively they've actually been really good like petrie weber edmondson um you know maybe they add a maybe they add another defenseman i don't know what the heck you do if you're this team cuz they should be better than what they have been yeah um this last stretch has not been good they should be better than that there's not a lot of glaring holes in this lineup um i wonder if bergevin goes out and tries to make some sort of big splash move and really mm-hmm. make a significant kind of trade um maybe like a philip forsberg or someone like that where he really tries to make a significant move um, I don't think you're just going to you're not this isn't going to be a, add a veteran depth piece and be done with it. Like you're either doing nothing and just trying to get this team to play the way that they should or you're making a significant splash move. There's going to be no in between here with Montreal. I'm going to have to agree with you on that 100 percent because they made all of their moves at the end of last year during the off season. You know what I mean? And 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 I kind of feel that they've already kind of expended that little bit of, you know what I mean, that whatever, they, that they did that at the beginning of the uh, uh, of the offseason and where, where it was able to do all that. I don't think you're going to see this team doing really much of anything other than potentially adding a, a defensive player or something along those lines because, look, let's face it, they've already fired their coach. They've already fired their goalie coach. You know what I mean? I'm, th- this, this is almost like a train wreck season for them. You know, you, if you're not going to be able to get it, I mean, they have a little bit of money. You know, they got like one point something million on their on their uh, uh, in their trade or, or their cap space. But who are you going to get? You're going to have to get somebody to come in and do something. You know, uh, Peyton, what do you think? What, who do you think is going to be on the docket there for Montreal, if anybody? Uh, it's tough to say with Montreal. I, I I know one of the biggest problems they've been having recently is Carey Price has been a big issue for them. He's been, you know, on the downfield for the past couple of years, and you've been kind of seeing it this year where some games he's just, he's playing like typical Carey Price where he's, he's fantastic. And then there's other nights where it's just, what is this Carey Price? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's been the biggest problem for, I think, Montreal, or for, yeah, for Montreal. Their defense looks great. Their offense on paper looks amazing. They have a lot of good goal scorers. 
I don't know if they would be able to do anything. With Suzuki and Konkin and Ami, you're probably going to be having to pay them bonuses, especially with how well Suzuki's been playing. Uh, you might have to pay those guys bonuses, so that leaves you with not very much cap left on that floor. Uh, and especially since you've been having to move Paul Byron through uh, Taxi Squad and back up to save some money there for, uh, for Montreal. Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe like maybe go after Sam Bennett, Jake for ten, and one of those tweener guys, or maybe go to yeah. Detroit ask about a Bobby Ryan. Uh, I, I think they definitely Montreal needs that all star type of player though. They need that that guy to be that number one centerman because they haven't really had that in a long time. Uh, people have been talking about Jack Geichel and his perfect destinations. Montreal would be a perfect destination for Jack Eichel. He has, this squad has a great selection of wingers, uh, goal scorers. It would be the motherland for Jack Eichel. I was just going to say, great. yeah, that would be, yeah. <laughs> I think if you were to go and trade for somebody, Jack Eichel would be your guy, but it, it wouldn't make any sense just because of the fact that you have to pay him $10 million and you're already paying Carey Price $10.5 million. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see it fitting under the cap for the Montreal Canadiens. So I, I would see them as buyers, but I don't see them making any moves just because of the fact that their salary cap is just, they're too uptight with it. Okay. Yeah. Cause they, they don't have very much. And with the bonuses that they're going to have to pay and everything like that, it's going to make it that much more difficult. Perlo, what do you think? Um, let, let me pose this one here for you, Perlo. You were talking about Edmonton needing a goalie, mm. right? And you're talking about this huge splash deal. Let me throw a splash deal at you, Carey Price. Oh, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I mean, that would be wonderful, but it would be an off-season move for one. Uh, and uh, I mean, I talked about the possibility of trading Carey Price a while ago. He's got a no movement clause. I can't see him saying that I'd like to go to Edmonton. I just yeah. can't see that. So that's not likely going to happen. Um, one thing, the uh, as far as Montreal is concerned, the, uh, the guy I think they go after is either Bernier or Grice in Detroit. Those are the, both the only difficult tenders I can see that could move the needle enough for them to be able to stop enough pucks to score in the playoffs. Okay. Uh, and they're and they're fairly affordable. They should be able to get them for a decent for all right and be able to work out uh, something that they can uh, even up the money, whatever the case may be. But uh, that would be my case for, the, for, for Montreal. I totally with John and Peyton on this sense. Uh, if they're going to, the problem here is we don't know what's going on in that room. And Weber mm -hmm. just came straight out and said there's a problem in the room. They fired Julian to have another coach in there to solve this problem in the room. I'm just filling in gaps here. I don't know exactly what it is, but it sounds like that. Right, 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 right. Okay. If you don't see an improvement in Montreal, then eventually they're going to highlight a player or two that is the problem in that room, and we'll find out who they are at the trade deadline. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they will be the ones probably. Unless the, the problem in the room is Carey Price, then they're in big bigger trouble than I could possibly imagine. Because, uh, I mean, he's having a poor time right now, and uh, I don't know what his attitude is like that. I don't want nothing about him. All I've heard is good things about him. I'm not making a rumor right, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm just saying, like, throwing things out a wall here. Yeah. Um, I do know that... Um, I do know that... Uh, oh, their third-line center. Why do I always forget his name? Didn't know. Didn't know. Didn't know. I know Den O was was speaking a lot in the uh, media a lot in the off season about the fact that he was a second line center, and there seemed to be friction between him and Domi, and he he spoke a lot about that. Like he spoke quite a bit, so that could be a possibility. And if anything was going to be happening here, like I agree with Peyton as well for sure, that they would be and 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 uh, John as well. They'd be looking for a veteran center to play with those two kids. Eric and Stahl. Yeah, Stahl was one Stahl of the ones me, that yeah. came to my mind or somebody like that, yeah. that uh, Eric Stahl or something like that to bring some uh, bring some uh, stability there and stability yeah, into whatever yeah. that situation. Yeah, try to find somebody that's a good problem solver. Veteran type <laughs> that's guy a good, that's yeah. done a lot of things, so. You know, now, did Weber say this stuff after the new coach took over? 
Or was he so. said yeah. almost immediately when the after he got fired. Okay, uh, okay. So so then it it I'm wondering if it might have been that the message that Julian was trying to, to to get through was not the right message for the team anymore. Or at least according to a couple of people. Uh, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> so maybe they did get rid of maybe they did get rid of what the issue was and you know, now they just Possibly. have to start coming together under a new system and under a new regime. You know what I mean? And that's not gonna that's gonna take a couple of games. That's not gonna happen, you know, in the first week or two. That's gonna take a little while, you know what I mean? And and with the lack of of practices and stuff like that the teams are experiencing that's going to be even harder to do especially with a new coach coming in halfway through the season you know what mm -hmm. i mean so all right uh so now the next team uh that's on the list here was um obviously uh the vancouver canucks they've been doing a little bit better but they are many points uh they have 26 points and the toronto maple Leafs have 38 but they're only three points out of the fourth place spot against uh montreal uh, Vancouver is doing uh, 12 and 15 and two, and they've won the last three in a row. So we'll start down there with Perlo. Perlo, what do you think about Vancouver? Do you think they're going to be buyers or sellers this year? Um, I think they're probably going to be in between. I, I don't. They. I, I don't think they want to sell off much of what they have, but um, they're probably not looking at buyers either. I mean, if they were going to buy, they definitely would be adding to uh, adding more to the defense. Uh, Myers really is still playing too high, um, and stuff. But they're going to see and need to see a resurgence for that to happen, which I think is perfectly possible for that to be the case. Now, I have heard Tanner Pearson's name out there because he's a UFA next year. Mm -hmm. If they're yeah. right out of it by the deadline, I could see somebody like Tanner Pearson for sure. They don't necessarily need to re-sign a guy like that moving up. They've got some younger players uh, even on their lineup right now, like Adam Goudette, who I still think doesn't get enough of a shot. Um, so, guys, somebody like that might be on the block. I don't think it would be too much if they were right out of it because one mainly because they really don't have too much to offer. <laughs> um, they, you know, maybe somebody wants to take a shot at Braden Holpe if he, uh, if they're sellers at the deadline, I wouldn't, but you never know, I suppose. Uh, yeah. I don't really see much they could do if they do a turnaround and then like they sort of did last year, they come on in the end and they, they, they get into the top four, then Possibly they're looking, I would say probably looking to add to their defense, but I don't think Vancouver is in a position where they want to be throwing draft picks out like crazy. They're not totally in out of the building mode here. Mm -hmm. So I don't see them trading their first or something like that. They would be yeah. trying to find somebody on the cheap that they could get somewhere for a third or something like that to, to yeah. add depth to their defense and just keep mm -hmm. on rolling uh, with this lineup. Jake Vertanen has been out there, but he's played better the last little while. Ever since he was on the rumor chart, rumor mill, he's played better. Um, that's a possibility, I suppose, still. Um, there's people out there that, you know, there's players out there that uh, – there was an tr actual trade of Danton Heinen, who's from BC, from Anaheim, for um, Jake Vertanen and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So, possibilities but i don't see anything to brandon sutter if they're right out of it somebody will probably take a flyer on brandon sutter they can retain some salary and send them somewhere so somebody like that okay i mean they do have they do have some long-term injured players so mm -hmm. they do have that potential money there available because they don't really have much of anything uh, otherwise as far as money wise is concerned they, they, they do have uh, Michael Furland is on on the long term, and he's a big cap hit at three point five. You know what I mean? And then they have they have two other players that are uh, equivalent to almost two million. So they're they're looking at about six million in, in in injury cap space. You know what I mean? So if it were to come down to it, and if those players were to be on the long term IR throughout the rest of the season, that would give them a little bit more wiggle room to do something or make a deal happen for Vancouver. John, what do you think about Vancouver and, and what's going on up there? And what do you think about their their chances of uh, having a trade here, doing something at the trade deadline? Well, they, they don't have the money to buy anything more than a rental because Elias Pettersson needs a new contract next year. Mm -hmm. and he's, in, he's in RFA at the end of this year. And, I mean, you're looking at 
you know, seven, eight million a year for him to sign there long term. So mm -hmm. um, they have no money. So the, if they do <laughs> buy anything, I think it would be a defenseman and it would be a, just a rental for the rest of this year. And that would be it. Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't think they're even really going to buy. I think they might sell off like t a guy like Tanner Pearson and Brent Sutter. Brandon Sutter and Pearson mm -hmm. are both UFAs at the end of this year. I would say they're both probably gone. Um, and maybe on the back end, a guy like Jordy Ben, they might be able to get a yeah. you know, th fourth round pick for him or something like that. Um, I think I don't think they're going to be buying. I don't think they have the money to be buying. They know that they have some big RFAs coming up. Thatcher Demko as well. Um, so they, they don't have the money to really take on any contracts. And exactly. Um, if anything, I, I mean, it's, it's an uphill battle for them to make the playoffs. They're still not out of it, but Montreal does have five games in hand on them and a three point lead. So, uh, that's going to be an uphill battle to say the least for them to get into the postseason. If anything, I think they might sell off some of those older guys. Um, yeah. And, and just kind of try again next year with hopefully Elias Patterson locked up to a long-term deal. There you go. So, uh, Peyton, um, can you can you take off your oiler hat and put on the Vancouver hat and, yeah. and change the sign behind you back there to, to say <laughs> <the> Canucks? <laughs> so uh, what, what, put on your uh, trade deadline hat here for the Canucks. Um, I This team, I was – I was excited about during the off season. I thought mm -hmm. this team was going to do a little bit better, um, but then they didn't. And kind of looking back at the team now, I should have seen that this team was incomplete and that there was a lot of, uh, there was going to be lots of faulties. Tyler Myers, uh, he's horrible defensively. His analytics is horrible. He, mm -hmm. He's good offense, but defense, when you have Quinn Hughes and you already got a lot of offensive guys, it, you don't need Tyler Myers there, and especially for the contract you have him at. For me, honestly, I, I would trade away a lot of people this year, especially going into the next year. I don't think this team would be ready next year just because of the fact you're still paying Louis Erickson, you're still paying a lot of contracts, and you're having to pay Hughes, Demko, and Pedersen next year. This team is yeah. going to have no money. I would try to get rid of Beagle and Roussel as well going into this uh, this trade deadline as well. See if anyone's going to have any biters on that. Because Beagle, I, I still can't believe Betting signed that contract for Beagle. But uh, besides the point, I, I think they should try to trade away a lot of their big contract players. Um, even, especially even Alexander Edler. I know he's a big face for the team, but he's been dropping off a bit this year as well. And yeah. he hasn't been playing as great as what he was last year. It's been legit Quinn Hughes and then Nate Schmidt, but even then he's making mistakes as well. You would need to redo that entire defensive core just to get something out of it. So if I was the Vancouver Canucks right now, uh, I would definitely be selling this team because, yeah, you might be three points back of the Montreal Canadiens, but you have two games ahead of the Canadians. Yeah. And plus, you just have the Flames who picked up Sutter, and who knows what the Flames might do um, this coming off season as well. And, and the Flames just look like a better team than the Canucks as well. I just think the Canucks should just be selling, getting rid of those bad contracts, and then try for next year if possible. Going to have to agree with you on that one. Um, it doesn't seem like there's going to be much of – I mean, with the low points production and the fact that they're in fifth place with Montreal that many games in hand, it, it seems like a, a long uphill climb for them uh, for sure. And it does seem like they might be more of the sellers uh, at the end of the year, especially with some of those bigger contracts and stuff. So I'm going to have to agree with all you guys and, and, and go with that, you know. So, all right, here, here we go now. Um, we're, we're coming to the end now. We got the last two teams, and the sixth place team is the Calgary Flames. Mm. And we've we well, I don't know what's going on up there in Calgary, but the rumblings that we've heard or that we've all kind of seen or read is that we know that that uh, 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 Goudreau would very much like to not be playing in Calgary. Um, and I really think that that's going to be a name that's going to be on the block. Oh, yeah. Um, um, and it, it's probably already is. It's just who's going to be able to offer them enough to say, all right, they're going to pull the trigger. You know what I mean? So we'll start off with the uh, great Pearl of Wisdom and uh, give us some parallels uh, on the Calgary at trade deadline. Well, I mean, they're in desperation mode. You don't go out and fire your coach and hire Dwayne Sutter without being in desperation mode. 
you take a 70-year-old dude who's obviously not going to be around for too long to try to just get something out of this season. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's like the Hail Mary save your job general <laughs> manager move. Like, yeah. Uh, and it could work. I love Dwayne Sutter. I mean, he's at the very least, he's going to be able to. I think what he's really there for is to put a stamp on who's leaving more than anything. Uh, I don't even think they believe that they're going to make the cup this year to t- or make it do much this year anyways, even if they do make the playoffs. I don't yeah. think they really believe it. I think they just trust Dwayne Sutter to be able to say, who are the guys that you're going to want to compete with in the future? And I think that – and they didn't really trust a, a, a rookie coach like they had to be able to make that assessment as much as they did Dwayne Sutter. I think that's the reason why he's there. Yeah, but we and, all thought – we all thought that Jeff Ward was doing a pretty good job up there. I, I like Jeff. Jeff considered. Ward's going to land on his feet. He's going to find a job somewhere. Yeah. It's just they, they just happen to trust a guy like Sutter, who's won cups and everything, to assess this lineup. <laughs> okay. I would say. Right or wrong, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I think Calgary makes horrible decisions with their lineup. So they'll probably make horrible decisions on who they choose to make decisions on their lineup. So... <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. but I just think that that's likely it. And if that's the case, from what I see on from Johnny Goudreau on the ice, this is just not the team for him. It's just yeah. not. Yeah. You know, and uh, I don't know if he wants out or whatever. I, I, I but I can't see him combining with du- with Dwayne Sutter and Dwayne Sutter saying, "Yeah, keep that guy." I, I, I think that he, I think he's probably going to find his way out. Dwayne Sutter is going to love Matthew Kachuk and. He's going to love Elias Lindholm and yeah. uh, Michael Backlin and, you know, guys like that. But Monaghan, Goudreau, like the core of this team has got to change. And uh, that's probably what is going to happen. I don't think this happens at the deadline, though. Highly unlikely. This is stuff that's going to happen at the draft or in the offseason, stuff like that. Does it really make sense right now with what we, a lot of things we mentioned with COVID and all that kind of stuff like that? Um but it could. It's possible. I'm not saying it's not possible. Somebody could really put out what they need on that. But I just think that he's. they're going to want the whole year for him to establish that. So even when they're out of the playoffs, which guys are the ones that are still competing for their jobs, right? And they trust Dwayne Sutter to be able to do that. So I don't think it'll happen at the deadline. But I do think you're going to see a totally different Calgary team next year. Okay. Okay, I can I can buy into that. Uh, Peyton, what do, what do you think about uh, uh, the the Calgary Flames? I mean, you know that that was the other team that you know fired their coach halfway through the season. And I mean, like you know why? And we all thought. I mean, at least uh, I know that Perlo and I thought that that Wood was doing a pretty decent job, all things considered, up there in Calgary. Uh, you know what I mean? Seeing as how they've had uh, you know what six coaches now, or you know five coaches in the last six years. I mean, what's going on up there? All right, hey, uh, give, give, give us I, a little, uh, give us a little lowdown here on on the trade deadline for the Calgary Flames. I know a lot of the fans; they definitely did want Jeff Ward to be fired, and I, I knew a lot of them were they were then mixed feelings, kind of like what I was feeling when Sutter got hired. I was like mixed feelings on that. I'm like, I don't know. He's won a couple cups before. He could either be a, a, a great, he could win them cups, or it just will be they'll be a bottom feeder team in these next couple of years. And uh, I've been saying this since the start of the season when I was reviewing this team. This team is just not good enough. And they're not. They they don't look good, very good on paper. And the thing is, they're not going to be able to do very much this offseason unless you get rid of a Goudreau and Monaghan. Just because you are, have so many people locked up on so many contracts. Like you have yeah. Lucic locked up for the next three, Backlund for the next four, Monaghan for the next three, same with Lindo for the next four, and their entire defensive core is locked up for the next little Most bit up, as well. Yeah. So for this team, you couldn't even really be sellers. I, I've been hearing they've been wanting some right-handed shooters on the team as well, like Arvidsson or Forsberg I've been hearing for the Calgary Flames. I don't think it's a realistic thing for them. I think they almost need a first-line centerman, just kind of like what Montreal's kind of going through right now. They need that star centerman to, you know, take this team to that next step. Lindholm is not that guy for the team. Neither is Sean Monaghan. Monaghan has completely dropped off. I was talking with a couple of Calgary fans, and they have not been a big fan of Monaghan's defensive game. 
and same with his offensive game as well. Um, he's been losing that kind of drive. And, and you can say almost the same with Goudreau. Goudreau has been crazy offensively this year. And I think if going into this offseason could fetch you a pretty good amount of good players for the future of the Calgary Flames. So I don't see them doing anything. I could see them being a buyer just because of Brad Trevelyan and the things that he will do uh, to make this team a playoff team and keep this team floating. Um, I do see them going after kind of like an Arvidsson Forsberg, but I don't see it happening uh, because they'll probably be near the bottom of the league anyways for the North Division. So, um, yeah, I, I don't really see them doing too much at the trade deadline. Okay. Um, I you know, uh, I think they're going to be more of the seller type. I think you're going to start to see some of those big contracts go away. And I, I think you, I think we are going to see, uh, the name like Johnny Goudreau is going to fly before the, or at, or around the trade deadline. I just to have that feeling. I just, it, it just, that that's too much of a, a talent to be, you know, kind of wasting away somewhere where it can't do anybody any good. And I think somebody is going to be ponying up the money to bring him somewhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, uh, John, what do you think about Calgary and what do you think about um, where they're going to be and what's going to happen with them this year? Uh, I think there could be a big difference between what they should do and what they actually do. This yeah, year, knowing, sure. knowing the Calgary Flames, I that's, feel like they're going to well go said. into desperation buy mode at the deadline and try Probably. and bring somebody in to yeah. push them into a playoff spot. Like You don't go out and get Daryl Sutter f to be a non-playoff team. Like yep. This is a guy who's coached almost 1,300 career games. He has over 600 wins. He has two Stanley Cups. Like, you don't bring that in to not make make the playoffs. So the fact that they hired Sutter um, screams to me that they're still trying to make some sort of run this year. And I think that means they're going to do really stupid things at the trade deadlines, <laughs> trade away draft picks, bring in players that don't actually help them very much. Um, and probably screw them, screw themselves up even further than what they already are. What they should do is pretty much nothing. I think they should just kind of sit, wait out the rest of the year, let Sutter get a feel for this team, understand who he wants and who yeah. he doesn't. And then yep. on draft day, you mm. go out and you try and make a Johnny Goodrow trade and you try and make a Sean Monahan trade. And I don't think those are deals that would be done at deadline day just because of the amount of money involved. But on draft day, I think those are the kind of deals that you can get done. And that is when the Calgary Flames should really make their changes and try and get some sort of new look to this team because this core is not going to win anything the way that it is right now. Mm -hmm. And they, they've they proven that over the past five years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we talked about this pretty much on multiple shows. We, we talked about it on the Perlo show uh, that, you know, look, that, that core has been up there for that amount of time and they still haven't done anything. Yep, they haven't yep. won anything and they haven't. And, and when they were a number one seed, they, they got beat down like they weren't. <laughs> they you know got what embarrassed. I mean? and, yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm with, I don't know. I just think, I think that they're bringing in S Sutter or Suter, however you want to say his name. I think they're bringing him in to, to clean house. That's kind of yep. what I think. Yeah. I think, I, I think, not, I think no. that you're going to see some players go at the trade deadline. And then I also think you're going to see the big names go maybe, that don't go at the trade deadline also at, at the, uh, 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 during the draft. So that was a great point there, John, about bringing that up. Cause I really think that that's another way for them to potentially build a team that, um, Sutter is looking to, to have and, and giving him pieces to do that with at the, uh, not only at the trade deadline, but also during the draft, you know what I mean? Yeah. So mm -hmm. what worries right. me about uh, that Sutter signing before we move on to the next one, but I said, I think I said Dwayne, sorry, Daryl Sutter, right? Yeah. Uh, but um, what worries me about that signing is that uh, Lucic thought it was a good idea. <laughs> It's oh, in Sutter. Lucic, Lucic Sutter is going to love idea. Sutter and Sutter. He's going to love the love big he, he played with him in LA, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think yeah, so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, okay. Now, the worst team. Well, they're not the worst team right anymore. They they've they've gotten off the schneid of being the worst team, but they're pretty close. I mean, they're they're fighting hard to be the worst team, and that's the Ottawa Senators. Uh, they've mm -hmm. played more. Well, yeah, they they played uh, twenty eight games and they are nine and eighteen and way way back. Mm -hmm. So the chances of them making any kind of anything happen this year is probably zero. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen with the Ottawa Senators? And we'll start off with John this time. 
Yeah, they're, I mean, they might be able to sell off some veteran pieces, but they don't really have a lot of veteran pieces. They're just a very young team. I mean, they've got so many young guys in that lineup that they're, they're, you know, obviously still in a rebuild and they're, they're just going to try and keep, you know, rolling with those young guys and see how they look. And I don't think you're going to see a ton of moves here. I think some of the older guys, you know, that they do have, they could be able to move for maybe some late round picks or something like that. Like uh, Artem and Nisimov, although I don't know if anyone would even be in on him at this point. He's making way too much money for bringing practically nothing to the table. Um, they they just reacquired Ryan Dezingle, but he's a UFA at the end of the year. So maybe they could flip him for a second or third round pick or something like that. Um, I think, you know, on the back end, maybe someone takes a stab at Eric Branson as a depth defenseman who might need like a bottom pair guy or something like that. I don't know. There's, there's not a lot of of older guys left with this group. They're a very, very young team right now. Derek Stepan would have been a great guy to trade at the deadline, but he's out for the rest of the year with shoulder surgery, so you can't move him now. Um, Braden Coburn is sitting down on the taxi squad. That's another guy similar to Good Branson, I think. Maybe a team looking for a depth veteran guy could could add in as like a number seven D-man or something like that. But there's not a whole lot to move in Ottawa. Um, they're just going to keep rolling with the young guys and maybe sell off a couple of those older guys if they get the chance to for, you know, a late round pick or something like that. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of uh, it seems like uh, pretty slim pickings up there. Yeah. Uh, as far as uh, anything like that. And they are I mean, their average age is 25 years uh, for the team. Uh, Peyton, what do you think about uh, what's going on up there with Ottawa? Do you think they're going to keep riding the the youngsters or do you think what, what do you think they're going to do up there, Peyton? Yeah, I think they're going to continue riding with the youngsters. I don't see them trading too many people uh, like a Dezingle. I would see that. I think that's the only guy that I would see them trading. Uh, I think the rest of the team, they just have too much of a uh, kind of a, you know, a team uh, kind of value. I think they're trying to go with right now is with that defensive core. They're really just trying to build it from within and. You know, I think it works with a lot of teams. We've seen it with Tampa Bay um, from building it within. You get better chemistry. Uh, we were talking about in the offseason with kind of like the the university connection that they've been getting with Jacob Bernard Docker and uh, Jake Sanderson. I think they're going to continue developing their young players. Uh, I don't really even see them trade away Erica Branson just because of the fact he's been a such a big uh, heavyweight for the team, a guy that's been standing up for a lot of their rookies, uh, especially when Jujar uh, laid a big hit there on Norris in the last game there. Erica Branson went right after Kara. Um, and I think that they want to kind of keep this team the way that it is. They're looking like they're enjoying hockey, even mm-hmm. though they're losing. And that is really, really good as a GM, as a coach. You want to see these guys happy. You want to see Kachuk and Stutzla uh, having a, a friendship together. Uh, and Batherson playing the way that he is. And Norris and all these youngsters that they've been playing the way that they've been playing. I think they want to continue that and they're going to continue developing this team. I know Mark Mathot said that this team could be better than the Toronto Maple Leafs here in the next three years. And honestly, if they keep building up this chemistry, like how they have been, who knows the sky's the limits for Ottawa right now, but I don't see them doing too much at the trade deadline. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that too. Uh, Perlo drop some wisdom on us here about the Ottawa senators. Would you? Yeah, much much the same as what the what uh, John and uh, Peyton have said. Um, however, I would like to say that Ottawa has really shown that they're not afraid to give up some of their future right now for some highly character veterans. They gave up yep. two two seconds for Stepan. Stepan is a highly is uh, very much character character to the nines like. He probably going to be a coach at the end of his career. He's really great at building young players and all that stuff like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did something like that. More likely at, uh, after this season's over. But I, if, if it's the right guy and it's the one they are like, this is going to help for our young players. and We want this to be the prototype of what our young players want to be. I could see them throwing a draft pick at a veteran at the deadline. They, they they think outside of the box like that. They're not doing a normal thing. And we've mentioned it several times. 
Uh, I doubt very, he's got a no movement clause, so it's not likely, but just based on character, I haven't identified an actual player yet. Um, looking through everything because it just came to my mind while we were talking. But Nicholas Jalmerson is a great example. A guy like that probably wouldn't go to Ottawa. He wants to go win a cu another cup somewhere, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. But I mean, if they sold him on the right uh, in the right package and said, "Hey, you know what? We'll sign you up for some more. Can extend your career. We really want you to build up our young players. We think we're going to be winning here really quick." You know, talking to their agent. You never know. He may say, "Okay, well, you know, I would love to be that kind of guy." Uh, uh, maybe he wants to be a coach when he's over, when he's out of hockey and he wants to build up that resume. Like Stefan did going to Ottawa, gave, probably was part of the reason why he made a decision like that. So somebody like that I think is possible. But besides that, I agree. There's not much on this roster you're going to get much for right now. Uh, they're, they're, they kind of would like to because they would like to also add a few more draft picks as well if they can. But... If they're going to do something, I think it might be something like like uh, that because they seem to value it quite a bit. Two seconds for Stepan was a lot to give up. Yeah, for a guy especially that made his salary. Yeah, especially two seconds. I mean, seconds are pretty well coveted in the NHL as far as like you know that a lot of teams get some really good players from that second round draft. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Here's the thing: Ottawa seems like they're. They're on the cusp. They have some young talent. They they have some money. You know what I mean? And they potentially could be one of those teams that might be one of those buyers of one of those particular veterans. You know, who knows? I mean, anything could happen. You know what I'm saying? And without really, you know, knowing what direction the team wants to go. I mean, they're, they're obviously very young and they want to continue to build on that. You know what I mean? And they don't really have a lot of assets to sell away, but they do have money and they do have picks and money and picks can bring you players. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if they really wanted somebody, they could probably do it. You know, yeah. they have the money to do it and they have the picks. So if they really wanted somebody, they could probably do it. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say about Ottawa. I don't really think that they're going to be, much of anything this year as far as uh, uh, getting into the playoffs or anything like that. Um, I, I just no. – it, it's going to be next year for them or the following. And, and as they continue to progress and, and, and move along, um, seeing these young players develop and, and seeing how this team comes along, I would be interested to see if they do make one of those moves for – I mean, you know, maybe a Jack Eichel would come there. Who knows? I mean, they have the money. You know what I mean? So it's not like they couldn't do it. Or, no. or you know – um, Youngerson or even uh, Ekholm. I mean, all these big names, even Johnny Goudreau. I mean, I'm just throwing stuff out there of people that could potentially be going there. They have the money to do it. That's all I'm saying. I'd another rather... really, sorry, but another really good one before it is uh, that they might identify a talent in Casey Middlestad or something like that, a guy that's fallen off the vine on a team mm -hmm. yeah. that they want to re do a rebirth that's still young. They might yeah. maybe yeah. something those, like those that. Those are sorry. the kind of moves I would be expecting you're going to see teams make, um, especially in in the interdivisions. Sorry to you know step on the John there. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. No, so I just I think that uh, Goodrow would be much better for Ottawa to go after than Eichel because as soon as you br go after mm -hmm. Eichel, they're gonna want Buffalo is gonna want either Stutzla or Kachuk or yeah. uh, Jake Sanderson back coming the other way, and I'm not doing that if I'm the Ottawa Senators. So I think Goodrow would be a lower cost option that could still bring a talented goal scorer to the lineup. And then if you have good row in there, that helps out Brady Kachuk on that left side a lot and takes a lot of the pressure off of him. So that would be a move I'd be all over if I'm the Ottawa Senators. I'm probably not in on Eichel if I'm Ottawa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I was just throwing ideas out there. You know, yeah. I mean, who knows? Anything could happen. You know, it's, it's the NHL. Anything could happen. Well, folks, I think this has been a, a really great breakdown of the uh, of the North Division uh, for the NHL and the trade deadlines here at the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. I'd like to thank John from Off the Wall Hockey for joining us. Um, I'd like to thank Peyton uh, from Peyton on the Radio for joining us, and I'd like to thank Perlo from Perlo Wisdom for joining us. You can catch all these guys at the Steel Flyers All Sports Network at www.steelflyers.com. Each one of these guys has their own page that they can get all their information on and check them all out. Check out their 
uh, YouTube channel and, and check out all the great things on the website. Please hit the like and subscribe. Thank you all very much for watching. Just remember, folks, stay safe, stay strong, and hang tough.